The pick-me girl says that she's pregnant and that my husband is the father. So of course I ruined her life. Story time. So me and my husband, who we'll call Steve, have a great marriage. There was only one problem that kept popping up and that was his best friend, Amy. At the beginning of the relationship, I was like, listen, this isn't okay. Get yourself a male best friend. Not me getting bronzer mixed into my eye cream. But when we first met, Steve told me that Amy had a very serious boyfriend and that did make me feel a lot better. So after a short while I was dating, he started to bring around Amy to our house more. One day he gets a call from Amy and I could tell something bad had happened, like just from what he was saying to her. So when he came out of his bedroom, I said to him like, you know, what's going on? Has something happened? And he told me that Amy's boyfriend had broken up with her, probably because she's in love with Steve and that he needed to go around as soon as possible. And I was like, well, listen, I was trying to get a good relationship with this girl. So I was like, can I come with you? He said, it's probably best that you don't. And this was so cold. Guys, I waited four hours for him to get home from her house. And at this point, I won't lie, I was starting to get really, really annoyed. About 11 at night, I called him and I was like, listen, I'm really tired. I'm going to go to bed. What's the situation? And he replied, hours later, this is going to take a while. What do you mean it's going to take a while? Hasn't she got her own friends? I decided that I was just going to go to sleep. Girlies, you will never guess. You'll never guess. I felt him crawl into bed at about half past two in the morning. This man stunk of booze. So over the next few days, Amy keeps calling Steve constantly. And then one night, after expressing how uncomfortable this whole thing was making me, Steve decides to invite Amy round for dinner. Woo! She got to our house. She was like a completely different person. She kept flirting with Steve nonstop, just right in front of me. And she started doing this thing where she would laugh extra hard at his jokes and she'd be like, throwing her hair back. Stop, it's embarrassing. She kept touching his leg, touching his arm. And then when Amy caught on that I was giving Steve looks, she started giving me dirty looks. When she left, I made it very clear that I was mad at them both. He said that he didn't want to reject her advances because he knew that she was going through a tough time and didn't want to make her upset. I'm gonna try this foundation. I think it's gonna be too light though. The next day I was at work and I get a random text from Amy and she shows me a picture of a positive pregnancy test. Now I'm positively sure that's not my Steve. Immediately called Steve because I knew that this girl was batshit crazy and she would do anything to try and break us up at this point. And Steve convinced me and he was adamant that this baby was not his. He said over and over again that he had never, ever done anything with Amy. So he called her and was like, listen, babes, what is going on here? Remember the night that he went round and he came back into bed, smelling of booze. She tried to tell him that that night he'd got really drunk with her and they had ended up sleeping together. So we started to look into like paternity tests and we found out that women can do one in the first trimester. And as soon as we told Amy this piece of information, she was like, well, you know, maybe it might be my ex's baby. I'm not too sure. And I'm not going to lie. After this, we knew for a fact that it wasn't Steve's baby. So at this point, I was like, she's trying to ruin my relationship. She's flirting with my husband in front of me. Now she's trying to say that this this baby is his i lost my mind so i turned up at her work and i confronted this bitch in front of all of her colleagues and i gave her the reality check that she needed and i was like listen babe just because you're going through a hard time does not mean that this whole world revolves around you i was like stop trying to purposely ruin our relationship because you're selfish my husband doesn't nor ever will want you as his partner steve doesn't love you and he never will I said everyone knows to hold their nose very tightly when they're around you. I would have continued on for a lot longer, but she got up and started crying. And she looked back to see if anyone was running after her and not a single one of her co-workers ran after her. They didn't give a shit. So what do you think? Am I in the wrong care? I've hurt my wife deeply and I need help fixing it. I'm 21 male and my wife 22 female have been together since we were in middle school. We have loved each other unconditionally the entire time, but I've been slowly slipping and screwing up time after time and I need help to fix this and build our relationship back to what it was before, but make it stronger and better. Here are the biggest things that happened to lead us to now. We talked about a push present for when my son was born, but I didn't get her anything for it, even after she expressed wanting one, and I had told her that I'd get her something. In my defense, I was about to be deployed, so it was a lot going on, but still, it was our first child and she didn't want anything big, just something that showed I cared for her and loved her. I told her that I'd make it up to her and never did. First Mother's Day, she celebrated as a new mom. I didn't do any decorations and I got her only a bakeware pan that was shipped broken. She liked the dish, but it was broken. I told her that I'd return it for a new one and I never did. 
I told her that I'd make it up to her and never did. She gave me a very intimate gift for Valentine's Day and I showed little to no reaction. We were already having a few issues in bed due to ED caused by stress and anxiety, so she was trying to help by giving me a sexy photo book that she put a lot of effort into. I told her that I'd make it up to her and never did. Then, more recently, we had a date planned for lunch on the day that I had off. She would be out of work for lunch around 12 to 12.30. I went to a card shop about 20 minutes away from her work thinking that I was right down the road. We recently moved so I was confused but still. Well, she was so happy to see me and go on the stage just to walk outside and realize I wasn't there and wouldn't be there for another 20 minutes. I told her that I'd make it up to her and never did. If you haven't noticed the pattern yet, I have a problem with saying I'll make it up to her and then dropping the ball over and over again after dropping the ball on major things. I don't want to lose my wife because of the broken promises and selfishness. The straw that broke the camel's back though was New Year's actually. We planned on spending time together for New Year's and instead, I was selfish and played online with my cousins for hours, which ate away at our time together. Then when she expressed she was upset about it, I didn't even try to talk to her about it. I pretty much just shrugged and tried to move past it. Then we just went to get ready for bed. Missed the clock turning to midnight, no kiss or anything, just let it pass. I let my wife go into New Year upset and questioning if I truly loved her or if I was with her for convenience. I love that woman more than I can express in any conceivable manner. I would do anything for her. I would hike the tallest mountain just to get her the flower that she wants at the top that only grows there. I would give her the clothes on my back and the breath in my lungs to make sure that she was comfortable and could breathe. She's an absolute angel. She's given me every chance every time. She's the smartest, sweetest, most beautiful, amazing woman that I've ever known. She still gives me butterflies when I look at her, when I think of her, when I kiss her. She loves me and shows me how much she loves me. I never questioned our love and I cannot ever forgive myself for making her question mine. Why do I keep messing up and hurting us both? I need help. How do I fix this? I never want her to question my love for her or our relationship again. I feel like I'm losing the love of my life. She's perfect in my eyes, my dream girl. I don't want to lose her. I can't lose her. Once when I was 14 years old, I stayed over at my friend Nina's house and I decided that I really, really wanted to get my seconds pierced. So Nina took a needle from her mum's sewing kit and we got an entire bottle of Bombay Sapphire out of the cupboard. And we used the Bombay Sapphire as both a disinfectant and as an anesthetic. Nina spends hours jabbing at my ears and she cannot get the needle through. So there was like a million tiny holes in each lobe. Eventually she manages to get one to stick, but it's only like halfway through my ear. And then we decide we need a drink break. So we start drinking some Coronas with this needle just like hanging out of my ear. There was blood everywhere. Where. Then we finished the coronas and with some liquid courage we managed to get the needle through both of the ears we put some earrings in. Then we remembered, oh my god, we cannot throw the corona bottles away in the bin because then Nina's mum is going to see them and we're going to get in trouble. The Bombay Sapphire bottle was fine because we filled it back up with water. Anyways, we're thinking we need to throw these bottles away in a bin outside of the house. So what do we think? The recycling bins outside of the post office. Brilliant. So we pack up my Kath Kidston backpack with all of the empty Corona bottles. I throw on my jeggings and my Nike puffer coat and we're ready to sneak out of the house. But then we remember, oh my God, we're two little 14 year old girls. We cannot be outside at four o'clock in the morning without any protection. So we head to the kitchen and we grab a kitchen knife. We make it to the post office, we throw the bottles away, we smoke the three cigarettes that I stole from my mother's handbag, and then we're on our way back home and we come across a field, and what's in the field? A frozen pond. So we decide to play this game where we both stand on the frozen pond and we take this long metal pole with a net on the end that we found on the side of the pond, and we smash the metal pole into the ice, and basically the game was, if the ice breaks, whoever manages to escape and not drown wins, and whoever doesn't loses the ice doesn't break we make it home blasting stormsy the whole way we go to sleep we wake up the next morning nina's mother is there she says i heard she sneak out this morning and also my bombay sapphire bottle is filled with water what the hell is going on my mum, who also stayed the night in nina's house along with me because for obvious reasons nina and i were not allowed to hang out unsupervised she looks at me and she says what the hell are these two new piercings that you've got and also why are their cigarettes missing from my handbag both Nina and I looked our mothers dead in the eye and said, And what? Anyways, now I'm 21 years old. I sleep with a nightlight. I just got home from my local pub at 9.45pm and I massively apologised to my mother because I shouldn't have been out that late on a school night. At the pub I had two pints because I cannot drink. That was my mother walking into my room asking me why I'm awake so late at half past 11. <laughs> apologised for that as well. Anyways, at the pub, I had two pints because I didn't eat enough for dinner. And if I don't eat enough, then I'll get woozy and I'll be asleep by nine. Can't drink spirits to save my life. My favourite pastimes are crosswording and puzzling. And I've just quit smoking. Tell you about the time that I met Justin Bieber and things did not go as planned. Okay, so I was in New York with my family on one of the days that Justin Bieber was going on one of those late night shows. I don't know which one, but he was here in New York. And my family and I were just shopping in Soho, minding our own business, when all of a sudden we saw everyone start whipping out their phones and freaking out. And then out of nowhere, we see Hailey Bieber. And I'm like not really that into celebrities, so I truly didn't care. 
until. I see Justin out of the corner of my eye, even though he's hard to pick out because he's wearing like this cap and a mask and a face covering and he's got all black on. And for some reason, nobody else has seen this. Like everyone's focused on Haley. I am the only person that has seen Justin. So Haley goes into the Prada store and I'm like, eh, whatever. But Justin just starts walking along Fifth Avenue. And I'm not even a Justin fan or anything. Like, I've barely heard any of his songs. But of course, I do know that it's everyone's lifetime dream to get a picture with Justin. So I kind of wanted to do it. But like, I'm not a fangirl or anything. I barely knew who he was. So I start just kind of walking along the same path as him. And eventually, I catch up to him. And there's literally nobody else around. Like, he didn't have security. He didn't have any fans following him. It was just me and Justin Bieber. So I walk up to him, I tap him on the shoulder, he turns around and I say, hey, are you Justin Bieber? And to my surprise, he turns around and he's like, yes, I am Justin Bieber. Are you a big fan of me? Of course I had to answer no because I barely heard any of his songs. So when I answered no, he was like, what? That's impossible. I'm Justin Bieber. Everyone knows who I am. So then he asked me what my favorite song is and I tell him I have literally never heard any song of yours. So get this, he invites me to his concert that night in New York, front frickin' row. We get a picture together and he says, I'll see you tonight, P.S. I love your vibe, we should be friends. So then all my friends and I go to the concert that night, front row, we all see Justin Bieber, they get pictures with him, we all hang out, and yeah. Now Justin Bieber and I are low-key friends, and that is the story of how I met Justin Bieber, and it didn't go as planned. And so trigger warning for my friends out there that can't handle poop stories. This is your time to tune out. So this is titled, I, quote, accidentally shit the bed in front of my boyfriend. Warning, don't read this if you have problems with feces and that kind of shit. Someone told me that I should share this embarrassing story, so here we go. Me, female 18, had just gotten into a relationship with my new sweet boyfriend, male 20. A little info about me, I have a chronic stomach wound, which pops up whenever I'm really stressed. There the relationship was very new, so we were both still quite shy. We had just gotten comfortable enough farting in front of each other though, and often made a joke out of it. About a month into our relationship, I had to go to the hospital with my stomach wound. I was there for a week, and he was super supportive the whole time. When I finally got home from the hospital, my body was so weak. I wasn't allowed to drink or eat anything the whole week because of the test they had to do. Therefore, my body had pretty much shut down. Nothing had come in, so nothing was coming out. I got prescribed some laxatives that I took never having taken them before i didn't know what to expect but it definitely wasn't this we were laying in bed i was on my side looking at my phone and he was half sitting up on bed playing runescape on his laptop in front of me i could feel a fart coming so i looked up into his eyes with a smirk face expression and said quote i'm shitting <laughs> i meant to say quote i'm farting but the words came out wrong and so did something else the moment i said it i let it all out still with a smirk face expression looking him <laughs> right in the eyes oh god you could hear a wet bubbly sound and i knew <laughs> instantly what had happened my smile faded and my face turned to horror my hand <laughs> flew down to stop the flow but it was too late my boyfriend jumped up and ran to the toilet to bring me paper helped me clean up while laughing hysterically what? i was so embarrassed that i couldn't even say anything later when we sat and talked he told me it was one of the most intimidating things he had ever experienced the way i looked him right in the eyes he had never felt so dominated in his life <laughs> Quote, like a monkey shitting in its hands and throwing it. Needless to say, we got very quickly comfortable with intimate things like that after this. Even though we've broken up since then what and it's been a few fuck? years, I'm to this day still just as embarrassed. Am I the astronaut for suggesting we lock up the Christmas presents after what my niece did last year? Every year, my siblings and I, alongside our families, spend Christmas with our parents. We stay at their house for a few days. Everyone opens gifts together. It's hectic, but a lot of fun. The kids enjoy having one big sleepover with their cousins. My mom likes having everyone home again. We all pitch in. It's a win-win. Last year, my brother married Sally. She has a seven-year-old daughter, Mindy. This was their first Christmas with us. It seemed like they were having a fun time. Christmas Eve, all the kids went to the finished basement to sleep. We told the kids not to open the gifts without us and to wake us up when they woke up. This was repeated several times. Once the kids were asleep, we put all the gifts under the tree and eventually went to bed ourselves. The next morning around 6 a.m., I wake up early and head downstairs. I find the living room a mess. 
half of the gifts were unwrapped. Several of them had been ripped from their boxes. There was Mindy, playing with some of the toys. Most of the ones weren't even hers. Oh, double no. She knows how to read, and they were all labeled, so she knew this. I was in shock. I went and got my brother, Sally, alongside with the rest of the adults. Sally was super embarrassed. My mom was very upset. The other kids weren't up yet, so we tried to salvage what we could while Sally talked to Mindy. Not everything could be fixed as she had broken a couple of toys completely. The broken ones weren't even her own toys. Luckily, not everything was damaged, and even the boxes that were, the kids didn't notice. But my nephew, sister's son, had one of his big gifts destroyed, and he was sad when everyone else got theirs while he was told he'd have to wait for a new one to come back in. Sally and my brother reimbursed everyone. Mindy didn't get to open gifts with everyone but joined the festivities later. She apologized but kept making excuses. She said that she didn't want to wait and she wanted to see what everyone else got. We were all preparing to go to my parents again this year. I put in the group chat that we should either lock the door to the living room this year or put a gate around the tree so no one can get to it. I didn't even name names, just specifically said, no one. Sally and my brother got mad, accusing me of treating Mindy like a baby or an animal. I said, I'm not, but this is a precaution, so none of the kids are tempted. They said, this isn't necessary, and I'm holding a mistake over Mindy's head. I said, no, I'm not. I'm trying to make sure we have no repeat. Because I know it'll be asked, Mindy does not have autism or ADHD, and even if she did, my daughter has ADHD, and both my sister's kids are on the spectrum. They knew better. I don't think Mindy was malicious. She was only six, but I do think precautions should be made. My parents agree with me, and my brother is mad that I put it in their heads. Am I the ass cannot? Have you ever met a pathological liar? I have. Actually, I had a best friend in high school who was a pathological liar. I'm going to tell you the entire story about this bitch. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> I feel like I'm at a place in my life where I can finally tell a story because I'm never again going to have relations with this girl. Like, I'm literally just so done with her and her friend group. So, like, let's just spill the tea, why don't we? So, in high school... <laughs> Freshman year, no, it was my sophomore year, um, my mother uh, got in contact with this woman on Facebook. This woman on Facebook posted and was like, my daughter just moved to this new school, my school, and she needs friends and somebody to walk to the bus with her. And my mom was like, my daughter will walk to the bus with your daughter. Against my will, Ugh, obviously. However, at the time, I was also low-key in need of friends, too. So... So, this girl and her mom came to my house, and we met, and it was very awkward at first, but we, we walked to school the next day, and the day after that, and the day after that, and slowly we clicked, and we became best friends, <laughs> okay? So, every single day, me and this girl walk to the bus stop and home from the bus stop. So, obviously, we're talking a lot, exchanging stories and lies, if you will. I'm pretty sure this girl is the reason why my lie detection skills are as prime as they are this to this day, you know? I'm, she's the reason. So, you know, I can thank you for that. I needed someone to help me develop this skill. Thank you. So one time we were walking home and this is like the first time I caught her in like a lie, like, I obviously didn't call her out on it, you know, because I was like, yeah, you're my best friend. But um, we're walking home and talking about how we want to go to Coachella because Coachella is so cool. And she goes, yeah, I went to Coachella last year. Mind you, I'm like, how? I was like 16 and she was like 15, right? Because I was a sophomore and she was a freshman. Okay. <laughs> if you know anything about Coachella, you know that you have to be 18 to go. I didn't know that when she told me, when she was originally, like, telling me. So in the moment, I was like, yeah, wow, that's really cool. So I was, like, believing her in the moment. But then I went home, and I was, like, look at, like looking up stuff and, like, researching Coachella and stuff. And then I saw that you had to be 18 to go. And then that's when I knew that she was bullshitting me. Especially because she had told me that she had, like, met a bunch of celebrities and shit there. And I was like, no fucking way, bro. That's so cool. But then I knew for a fact it was a fucking lie. And from that point on, I was catching her in lies all the time. 
One time she even did the classic, oh, my my cousin is a this celebrity. I don't remember which one she said. I'm pretty sure she said it was like Shawn Mendes, like some classic bullshit like that. I don't remember, but she pulled that bullshit and I was like, really? Anyways, the thing about pathological liars is that they don't like actively realize that they're lying 90% of the time they're just like doing it you know so they won't remember their lies and sometimes they'll mess up and they'll double up on their lies and they like won't match up to what they've said in the past and that's how i caught her a lot and like she would like she would fuck up you know and i just i was so over it so one day i sent her this long ass paragraph and i was like i'm so over it like you've lied about this and this and this because it started getting to the point where she would like lie about stupid petty shit like in like our friendships and our relationships and like it wouldn't even just be about like silly like oh i went to coachella oh my family members famous like stuff like that it would be like stuff within our friendship now so i was like i can't do this i can't be friends with someone like this so then i block her and move on and we don't have any contact there's not really any beef no drama nothing for years okay and then last year when i went to that fourth of july party at my friend's house i met this girl okay and me and this girl we were super cool whatever awesome me and her started talking snapchatting all the time hung out a couple times one time, one day, she sends me a picture, a Snapchat of her and another girl. Guess who she was with? She was with my ex high school best friend who is a pathological liar. And it had been years, right? So I was like, oh, you know, like, she's an adult now. We're not in high school anymore. Like, maybe she's not a little fucking weirdo anymore. So I was like, oh my god, that's cool, you're hanging out with her, like, we used to be friends, and like, she seemed really cool about it too, so we all started hanging out a couple times, but then one time, we were, all three of us were hanging out, right, and she starts fucking lying again, but this time it was like, I was like, you're a bad person, dude, like, she really thought she was cool for it too. She had started telling me a story about her birthday party, which I was at, but apparently this had happened before I got there, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she goes, yeah, I was so messed up, and I drank like a whole bottle by myself, and I was going around pouring shots in everybody's drinks, like just straight vodka and everybody's, uh, like, like their seltzer drinks, like... Like, and she was saying it so proudly, too. Like, what? Like, even if this wasn't a lie, it clearly was. She so, was so proudly, openly admitting that she was pouring more, giving more alcohol to people without their knowledge. Like, that's so not okay. So not okay on so many levels. Like, you were getting people more intoxicated against their will and finding that funny? She didn't. She didn't actually do that. But the fact that you're lying about it because you think it's cool and funny is weird as fuck, bro. The entire time she was telling me this story, I was literally just staring at her and I was like, uh-huh, yeah. And she could tell I wasn't, like, reciprocating it well, because I wasn't feeding into it at all. Did they ask me to hang out again after that? No, they didn't. Not the three of us alone, at least, okay? So we have my group of guy friends, right, who all like to hang out and get drunk together occasionally. And I introduced these two girls to them because my dudes are always like bring bitches and i'm like okay well here's some bitches you can have them i guess so they come over one night and they start hanging out with them okay even when i'm not around which irked me a little bit but that that doesn't happen anymore because because they found out why these girls are so mm -mm. anyways <laughs> i go over there to my guy friend's house and I'm talking to him. 
about these two girls. I don't bring it up. He brings it up, right? Because whatever, I don't give a fuck, really. But he goes, yeah, I don't fuck with so-and-so anymore. She lied to me. And I was like, oh, really? Interesting. What'd she lie about? And he goes, yeah, she told me she tried to make me feel bad and sympathize for her. And she told me that she had a brother who died in a crazy car accident or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But she told him that she had a brother who died. She does not have a brother. She has never had a brother. <laughs> and the other girl, those two girls, they're best friends now, right? They don't hang out with any of us anymore. For a good reason. The other girl, oh, she's a whole nother story and a fucking half. But we'll save that for another day, okay? <laughs> but yeah, this girl literally tried to invite me to a party the other night. And I was like, no, what are you gonna do? Like, fucking feed me alcohol or like drug me or some shit i'll pass you know or are you gonna make up some wild story about me and lie to people about it like i'm good i do not want to be anywhere near you i do love making my friends do crazy things with me like sometimes it genuinely backfires on me i wanted to view one of my ex hoes instagram stories but i was like oh fuck like i can't do it for my account and i don't have a fake account it would just be toxic and dangerous for me to have like a fake account in my head i'm like the next best solution is just making nicole view his story on her main account let me tell you i got humbled so fucking quickly Nicole views his story this man posted the absolute cringiest thing that could have ever fucking happened Man posted the dumbest fucking shit on his story and nicole's like this is what you wanted to see like this is dead ass what you wanted to see it really made her look at him in like a horrible light if she didn't already like if she didn't already like not really fuck with the guy what he posted on his instagram story i was like this is so fucking embarrassing he has like no followers so he's gonna see nicole's bitch ass at the top of his fucking page being like why is this girl with like fifty thousand followers just like viewing my story also he knows nicole is like one of my best friends but like i honestly just like to think that he's like dumb and doesn't like connect the dots. i am like okay if this hoe just randomly asked me like why did your best friend view my story you know what i'm gonna say I'm trying to fuck you and i told nicole this that night i was like if he god forbid like reaches out and is like why the fuck is this bitch viewing my stories I I'm just gonna be like, she wanted to fuck you. And Nicole's like, wait, but like, isn't that, it's like a little bit weird. Like he's gonna get confused. I go, exactly, exactly. So I can say like, that's the literally only insane thing I made Nicole do this weekend. Well, not, I, mean, I'm, I don't make the bitch do shit. She's like naturally insane on her own. She's right next to me. <laughs> Rolling her damn eyes at me. Paul and I have a severe issue of not having social awareness. Get in this Uber and we're just talking about the guy Nicole is like kind of seeing. And we're talking about crystals. And I was like, oh my God, like you should totally put like a rose quartz in his underwear so he like falls in love with you kind of thing. Why are you saying that? Like it's fucking normal. Like little <laughs> rose quartz in the underwear. No, he's like, why the fuck? Not like he'll literally be in love with you. I start telling Nicole this story. I'm like, but I don't want to tell you it. It's like so fucking embarrassing. And like the fact that I'm telling it here is like even more embarrassing. It's like, when have I ever judged you? Like I'll never judge you like just tell me what it is the uber driver is fully fucking listening to this story like i could have just waited till we got home but i was like no fuck it i'm gonna say it right now i'm telling nicole the story and i'm like remember so and so who like i was like hooking up with at that one time in my life nicole and i had just gotten back from la and i was like we got those crystals and she was like yeah and i was like we were making out with those crystals in our mouth I'm like wait what i'm like no like we were literally like hooking up with the crystal and just like going back and forth but like he didn't know anything of it but in my head i'm like this fucker's gonna fall in love with me Nicole's making it sound like i fucking brought crystals to like make out with this man that man put it in my mouth first I like that man put it in my and i'm like oh it's a rose course like he's gonna fall in love with me he didn't he did not i like thought it was hot i was like yeah like getting fucked with a crystal and i was like, like that's kind of hot like it's so spiritual and deep of me and you this uber driver is hearing everything and being being like nicole it was so hot that he was like shoving a rose quartz down my throat like he was deep throating me with the rose quartz like this Uber driver had to be fucking horrified. Of course, as I'm talking about getting fucked in the Uber, I'm not thinking anything of it because I'm just having a talk with Nicole. Like, I don't think about the Uber driver. Honestly, it might just be my biggest character flaw as I say it out loud because I'm like, yeah, like everyone, like, I just say whatever the fuck whenever the fuck. Nicole has that same tendency. Like, the story she told me in the Uber, I'm like, we just, there's no social awareness. Honestly, I really wouldn't have it any other way.